You know, now that I'm into these, I'm kind of surprised at the similarities and the differences. In my last video, I tore apart this Harbor Freight Hercules grinder, number 62556, and I was surprised what I found for a grinder that cost me 40 bucks. Now, we're going to see how it compares to a name brand grinder, the DeWalt DWE4011. DeWalt gave me this sample to tear apart. This grinder retails for about 60 bucks. If you want to know how that happened and why I accepted it, I'll put an explanation at the end of the video. For now, I can tell you I'm going to be fair with this. I'll tell you if it's good or if it's not so good. So why would you compare these two grinders side by side? Well, this is the lowest price DeWalt grinder, and this is the one Harbor Freight names specifically in their ads. If you want to jump from the Harbor Freight to a name brand, this is one of the next steps. To try to minimize the confusion, in all the shots, the DeWalt and its parts will be on the right, and the Harbor Freight will be on the left. First up, we have the handles. The DeWalt is simple ABS plastic. It's not very thick. There's nothing fancy here. The Hercules is glass fiber reinforced nylon and it's pretty beefy. Plus it has these thermoplastic elastomer areas, these rubberized spots for grip. So definitely nicer here on the Hercules. Looking at the bodies of these, both of them are well molded and finely detailed. They both also have some rougher areas to help with grip. Uh, the rougher areas are a little more pronounced here on the DeWalt. They're both also nice and slim, which makes them easy to hold. Some of the other grinders I've taken apart are a little fatter and not quite as comfortable. Both of these have a cover on the back you can remove to get access to the brushes. Now we're starting to get into these things. We can see some similarities here. They both use stamped brass brush holders. That's pretty normal. Uh, these ones are decently thick. I've seen on some other grinders I've taken apart really flimsy stamped brush holders that'll deform just when you're taking the brush out. Both of these look pretty good. They're also, they also both use a coil spring here to hold the brush in place and keep pressure on it. This design will keep good consistent pressure on the brushes as they wear. Someone pointed out in one of my other videos that a coil spring design also allows you to use a taller brush uh, than some other retention designs. Let's pull the switch out of here and take a look at it. If you remember, the Harbor Freight has a Marquardt brand switch. This is a name brand. It has a nice smooth action and a boot here to keep out debris. On the DeWalt, we have a Ningbo CPX Electronics Technology switch. That's a Chinese company. They do specialize in making switches. You can see a boot here. It has a decent action, definitely not as smooth as the Marquardt. There's nothing wrong with this switch, but on the Harbor Freight, they definitely stepped up to a top shelf name brand part. Let's crack this coconut open and see what the insides look like. Checking out the rotors here and we can see some similarities and some differences. They're both made the same way like pretty much any power tool rotor. Stamped laminations that are stacked here, then they are wound. Both of these have been dipped in resin to try to reinforce the windings and prevent vibrations from breaking something. And they also have some additional reinforcement. We can see epoxy here where the windings connect to the commutator. That's on both of them and that reinforces that connection between the windings and the commutator. That's a place where vibrations can cause the wire to break free and cause a failure. And then here on the DeWalt, something that I have not seen before, uh, there's additional resin up here at the top to reinforce these windings on this end, again, to prevent vibration from damaging something. Both of these use directional cooling fans, which is a good choice on a grinder because they only spin one way and a directional fan can more efficiently move air. I've seen on some other cheap grinders I took apart, they just used a generic non-directional fan. If you've watched my other videos, you know now is the time for a long lecture about bearings. Just kidding, not today, because these are exactly the same. We can see both of them use sealed bearings, which is a good choice. If they had wanted to cut costs, they could have used a shielded bearing instead. And both of these are CW brand. That's a reputable Chinese bearing maker. So I gotta say here, everything looks good. Looking at the gear cases here, and I don't know if the video will be able to pick up these slight differences, but the casting and the machine work is just a little bit cleaner here on the DeWalt. 
the machining marks are finer, and on the casting, there's less casting flash. That's not to say that the Harbor Freight is bad. This is actually cleanly machined, and there's not much casting flash, but it's just a little bit better over here on the DeWalt. Both of these do have a nice feature that some cheaper tools skip. They have a seal here that helps keep the grease inside the gear case. On some cheaper grinders I've taken apart, they don't have a seal here. They just rely on a press fit and the bearing itself to hold in the grease. Looking at the guards here, and the Harbor Freight uses a lever adjustment where you unlatch it, move the guard, and latch it back in place. This is a simple design, but it is an upgrade over some other grinders we've seen where you have to adjust a Phillips screw to move the guard. The DeWalt uses a little more of a complex mechanism, but I kind of see it as a benefit. The way this works is you push down the lever and you can move the guard one way, and then you just snap it into place where you want it. Depending on how you use the grinder might determine if this guard is a benefit or not. If the way you use the grinder requires you to move the guard a lot, then I could see this being a nice feature. We are going to keep on digging into these grinders and check out the gears. There's a basic design difference between these grinders, and that's how the gear case is assembled. We see here on the Harbor Freight, like on all the grinders I've taken apart, there's a cast bottom plate here, the main shaft runs through it, there's a gear here, and there's a bearing down in there. We also see a nice touch right here, a rubber seal to help keep the grease in the gear case. Over on the DeWalt, we see a different type of design. You get into the gear case through the top, there is this plastic cover plate on the top, but it does also have the same nice touch. There's a rubber seal here to help keep in the grease. On some cheaper grinders I've taken apart, they skip this step. Taking a look at the gears out of both of these, and one thing's clear right off the bat. These are both fully machined gears, which means they've been cut from a piece of stock. And we can see the machine work on both of them is very nicely done. There are clean, consistent, and fine machine marks here on the top of the gear of the DeWalt that continues into the teeth, which are nicely cut. It's a similar story over on the Harbor Freight. Quite good work. Maybe not quite as fine and consistent here on the top of the gear where it's been turned, but still very good. And both of these are loads better than the quality we've seen on the cheap grinders I've torn apart. You might wonder why I did not tear this apart more. That retaining ring made me think I could get it apart, but look closer. There's no keyway on the gear. This is pressed together. I removed the snap ring and tried using a puller to get it apart with no luck, so I left it as is for now. Taking a look at the field windings here, and again, we can see more similarities than differences. And that's because on both of these, they have not skipped the details that would be skipped on a cheaper grinder. Here on the fields, they're green, and that's because they've been coated here in epoxy on both of them. And just like we saw on the rotors, that epoxy is there to really hold everything together and reinforce the windings so they're less likely to be damaged by vibration. Guys, this channel is still really new, so a lot of people don't know about it. So if you like these videos, please share them on places like forums and social media, anywhere there are people who might like them. Now that we're thinking about the motors, another detail I forgot to mention earlier, both of these claim to draw 7 amps. The housings on both of these are made of PA6 GF30, so that's nylon with 30% glass fibers. That's a totally normal material for an application like this. Nothing wrong with that. And on both of these, there's plenty of meat. They're both uh, quite beefy housings, and they are plenty stiff for this job. On both of these, it looks like you can rotate the housing to change the orientation of the switch, for example, if you want it on the top instead of over on the side. Let's talk cables. Both of these use SJ cables, which is a good material. Cheaper grinders use SJT cord, which is junior service with a thermoplastic jacket. These are both SJ, which means thermoset rubber. That's tougher, it's more flexible in low temperatures. Uh, the Harbor Freight is a name brand, it's Leone. Uh, it's EPDM synthetic rubber. The DeWalt also is a name brand, it's Conductive Cable. This is their Power Tough line, which they say uses a proprietary synthetic jacket. There is thicker wiring on the Harbor Freight. It's 16 gauge here versus 18 gauge on the DeWalt. Both of these also have nice meaty cord protector boots that keep the cord from kinking over and failing. 
So after tearing these apart, which is better? Well, to me, it comes down to what you want. These both have some pluses and minuses on the build quality and the features. If you want to save some cash, you're getting a lot of quality per dollar on the Harbor Freight. But you also get a really short warranty. You can buy a longer warranty on the Harbor Freight, but that means you'll be paying the same cost as the DeWalt. If a longer warranty helps you sleep at night and you like the different guard adjustment, maybe the DeWalt is for you. Overall, the best choice here comes down to what you are looking for. I think there are good reasons to buy either of these. Hit the like button if you like this video, please share it online, and thanks for watching. So how did I end up getting a test sample of this DeWalt grinder? I was already planning to buy this exact grinder to compare to the Harbor Freight. I had it picked out on Amazon, and I was just waiting for some ad revenue so I could buy it. Then, out of the blue, a rep from DeWalt messaged me and asked if I wanted a sample of this grinder. They did not ask me for a good review, they just asked that I tear it apart, no strings attached. I didn't approach them, they approached me and offered the exact grinder I was already planning to buy. I said okay because I was going to buy one anyway, and I would not treat it any differently because it was a sample. Not having to buy it frees up some cash to buy other tools or equipment for these reviews.